When I first got on, it was for like teenagers to send nude photos of themselves to each other and my how we've come so far. Um, it's really a news source for a lot of millennials. I check Snapchat first thing in the morning. I read the Daily Mail. That's how I get my number one source of news. That used to be Twitter for me, and a lot of people do the same thing. It's a fun social platform. For me, it's a broadcasting opportunity to speak to millions of people. But for other people, it's just a fun way to socially engage with your friends with silly filters, but to also stay current on like what's going on in the world. You're also on Instagram, though. Of course. So Snapchat versus Instagram. So tough. So tough. Because Instagram stories for me as a creator is great. It's another opportunity for me to engage people, for me to monetize. It feels a little forced. Uh, it feels like it's much more natural on Snapchat because that's how the platform evolved. So I, I appreciate the effort. Instagram stories, I use it. I like it. I think Snapchat's just better at it, if that makes sense. You said the word monetize. What kind of money are you making? Well, that's a whole other segment. But what I can tell you is brands are really excited about getting in front of young female millennials. That's who follows me on Snapchat and Instagram. So it's a really cool opportunity for me to work with really cool brands like Captain Morgan, with a lot of TV networks, E Lifetime, things like that. Um, it's fun for them, and it's really fun for me. And are the, I'm sorry, I was going to say the brands themselves. Um, is it individual product stuff? Is it brand image stuff? It's both. Yeah. A lot of the times, it's for a specific movie, it's for a specific product, a specific new liquor brand. Um, but a lot of times, it's just getting in front of cool peeps that follow me. Uh, speaking of which, uh, getting in front of people. On Twitter, it's obvious, right? You're getting retweeted. Right. There's, it's easy people to discover you. They even suggest who to follow. None of that happens on Snapchat. Nope. It's so similar, how do you grow yep. your base? It's similar to Tumblr, where you never know how many followers people have. So people lie all the time. If somebody tells you they have X amount of followers, divide it in half. I do it all the time. I lie. Everyone on lies. On Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. To the, I do it at interviews. Just lie. No one can prove you wrong. Right. How do you even tell how many followers you, you have on Snapchat? So the most kind of analytics I get is just who views my Snapchat and how many of them. But that's not to say that 100,000 people could have me, but only 75% of them watch me, you know? Yeah. But does it matter to you how many followers you have? I mean, Snapchat's argument yeah. is that it's not about user growth. It's not. That's what's really important. So I have. So you buy that. You believe Yeah, it. I completely do. I have about two and a half million followers on Instagram, and I have 100,000 on Snapchat. Those 100,000 people are so much more valuable. Like, if I was just nominated for a Shorty Award, which is, you know, huge in the digital world, <laughs> thank you. I put that on my Snapchat because I know more people are going to vote for me there. They're just so much more valuable. They, if I'm adding someone on Snapchat, I really care about looking in, inside their life. Same for me. If somebody adds me on Snapchat, they really care. I don't really care if I follow someone on Instagram. I just like to see, you know, beautiful photos, pretty ladies, things like that. You say it feels a little more forced on Insta. Yeah. Do you believe Facebook can find ways to get better at that? It already is getting better. Is. Yeah, they added the stickers, they added cute little geo filters. They're, they're getting with it and it's getting better. I just think Snapchat did it first, you know? And the users are there and they, I, I feel loyal to Snapchat. Yeah, one, well. one question investors are asking is whether it's a fad. I mean, I think everyone thought it was a fad when 12-year-olds were sending selfies of themselves to each other. And now, you know, some of the biggest publishers in the world are on Snapchat Discover. So I don't think so, but older people just tend to write it off. Is this your primary job or is this yes. a hobby? Uh, well, it was a hobby when I was in school, but now it's a full-time job. Being a girl with no job is a full-time job. Is there something that well, investors right now, and this is a public company, are wanting to know what the next act for Snapchat can be in terms of the platform, in terms right. of what they can introduce, what they can become. Is there anything in particular that you see coming or that you would like to see that would make it better? I think the long-term video, the long-form video is very cool. I did, uh, ABC Digital has a bachelor after show that used to be on ABC Channel 7. Now it's on Snapchat. They get just as many viewers, I think actually a little more. I did it. It was so fun. It was so much funnier because there's not as many rules as when you're on cable. You could say the F word, you know? So, which I particularly like. <laughs> so that was just the long-form video, whether it's political, whether it's entertainment news, celebrity stuff, the long-form stuff is really fun to watch. And for me, it's really fun to participate in. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.